Hey there, Lockie from Zeno, and today I'm here to show you through a brand new feature, which is streaming APR response. So let's say you're working with something like ChatGPT, and when you use a sensor request, you ask the question, what is Zeno? We can now see as the response is getting received from ChatGPT, we're able to provide partial updates as part of our API response to give a better user experience around how the user receives that data. So let's go through and look at how can we actually set this up now using the brand new features in Xano. So we're now looking at a API that we've set up inside of Xano. And we can see at the very top here, we've now got this streaming response type. We actually configure this inside the API settings. And you'll see at the base of the configuration panel, we've now got response type. We can now enable stream type. The first thing you'll notice once you enable this is that the response at the base of your function stack now no longer exists. The reason for that is because we're setting essentially a connection to this API where we can send through partial updates, our response format is now defined by this new type of function block you can see, which is a streaming API response. In this example as well, now you might also receive streams from an external service. So we've also set up a new function block, which is a streaming API request. And here we're receiving a stream response specifically from ChatGPT. You'll notice inside the streaming API request, the, the panel itself is actually identical to your normal API requests. And for contacting ChatGPT, we can see we've now got the stream type enabled to be true, which is going to return a streaming event for us. Now, each time we receive a streaming event from ChatGPT, we're actually going to loop over this, which is the response we're receiving from ChatGPT. When they're going to return this item, and we've created a condition here just to basically check that and when we receive the response from ChatGPT, that hasn't completed because in the final response we receive from ChatGPT, we get the, the data type is what equals done essentially. So we've completed our request. So in this example, we can actually run this inside our function stack, but unfortunately we haven't yet got support to be able to see the real time events occur inside the function stack directly. But you will have a be able to see this inside of your front end when you set it up correctly. So when this which completes, you'll actually see the entire response we're receiving back here is an array of events. And each event is an object where essentially we're getting the chat completion and the actual information or the response we're receiving from the LM actually lives inside of a data item, which we can see somewhere in here under content, sorry. So we can see a content section here is essentially where we received the response from the LM. Now, what that then means is to be able to actually use this information on our front end, we need to set up some sort of code to be able to essentially take this stream event and then pass out the information that we're looking to then return on our front end. And I've got a bit of an example code here, which you can use as well. Now, the last item we want to update in our function stack is actually just this streaming external API response if you're using ChatGPT. We're actually just taking this substrate filter and we're accessing the sixth item inside the function to basically be able to then you know, cut off the very start point of the response we're receiving. It gives us a cleaner response. Now, once we're getting this response, we've also created this code as well, which you can use in your front end to kind of take this stream and then kind of handle that with an update on the front end. So what we're doing here is we're taking the URL, which will basically add your own endpoint URL here. And we're then using an event source type to make the request across to our streaming endpoint. And then we've got these areas here where you can basically add the variable that you're looking to update inside of your front end and also another one down here. And what happens is when we receive each event from the API, we're basically taking the uh, object we've received and we're passing through that just to get the content section, which is a string. And when they're updating the existing string variable we've got in our front end to give us this view where it's this continuously expanding string like you see on, on the page I was showing just a moment ago on WeWeb. So how I implement this in WeWeb specifically is we're able to basically this code and I've got a rich text item here where essentially I've set the content to be the variable which we're updating, which is called stream response. Now inside our request, when we actually make requests across to Xano, I'm using custom JavaScript here to essentially, again, I'm using the correct endpoint to access. I've defined the specific variable, which this is the stream response variable in the items that I mentioned, the three areas to update. So when we click request, it's then basically updating that stream with the responses we've received from the API. 
And we're now getting this nice, uh, I guess, improved user experience where we're not having to wait for the entire chat GPT response to execute before the user sees some updates on the front end. I hope this has been useful and I'm really looking forward to seeing you implement this into your applications. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to support or leave us a comment in the comment section below.